Yeah, I knew the, t the phrase Stockholm Syndrome, but I, I realized that I didn't know where it actually came from. It's fascinating to know that in 1973, there was a situation in a particular country where I, I got the sense that the capped, you know, the guys holding them hostage were more like the people they were holding hostage than the people that were trying to so-called save the hostages. It doesn't purport to be the exact incidents that happened, although there are a number of things that happen, most of the things that happen that are born out of what actually happened. But what I like is he's kind of taken it to another level and used the original story to create a really quite curious blend of thriller and dark comedy, which I think if you were just making a documentary, you, you'd miss the kind of element of craziness that's in the film. I wasn't around for the first few days of shooting. And in fact, the first day I arrived, uh, there was Ethan with his, in his cowboy hat, his shades, you know, the big wig and the moustache and the leather jacket, firing his gun in the air, screaming at everybody. And I kind of quickly realized, okay, there's maybe the best path to follow here is to go down a, a slightly straight man path, if you will. Because Gunnar is quieter, more thoughtful, he does have um, these issues going on about whether or not he's going to side with Ethan or with the police. So he's kind of mysterious in that way. And actually, it suited me really well to, um, to play a kind of quieter, more thoughtful character. He was probably one of the best known gangsters in Sweden and was weirdly kind of loved by the populace. That curious thing that happens where somehow criminals become so famous that the populate, you know, the normal people seem to think that they, they kind of elevate them to some sort of status. Anyway, he had a kind of status as a gangster, so we had to work out how we would present that. And there's some wonderful scenes in which he's incredibly insolent with the police, and you get a sense that he just thinks he's a bit of a rock star, as do the gathered journalists, for example, when he arrives at the, at the bank. It really helps to her to shoot an order. I don't, I've never done it, I have to say. And even when uh, initially I was told that that would happen, I, I couldn't believe it. I thought, you know, the demands of location means that you have to chop and change. But this has pretty much been consecutive and it, it's an enormous help because the development of the relationship I was talking about earlier between uh, Ethan and I, you can feel it growing and developing as you come in every day to shoot the scenes that you're shooting. I'm sure he's felt the same with the relationship that he has with Bianca. And also the relationship that I have with the hostages, you know, with, uh, with uh, Bayer and Mark's characters who are being held hostage. There's a development that happens within the movie that we were allowed to have happen over the course of shooting, which is undeniably useful. I always fall in love with the people that I'm working with, to be honest, uh, because you're thrown together. And this, you know, more than anywhere, because literally it takes place in the foyer of the bank and then in the vault, and we've spent you know, a couple of weeks, few weeks in, in the vault together, both when the camera's been rolling and when it hasn't. So, yeah, you know, we've talked about everything under the sun and got to know each other. And uh, the same is true of Bayer and Mark, you know, the hostages. We've, we've all kind of formed this little gang who are all in it together, and that's the best feeling. Get here! Was he surprised? We will let the ladies go when it's over. Have you done this before? Do I look like an idiot? <laughs> what is it like being stuck in there with criminals? It's not too bad. It's like a child. Why did the victim's eyes turn to the police? Stockholm case.